Okay, so I just arrived into school and I am looking over my planner and I just realized that I did not write down any of my plans. Now that's not to say that I don't have a plan. I do have a plan. Everything is inside of my uh, learner management system, which is Schoology is what my district uses. So everything is in there. I just didn't write it down. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking last week. A little bit of space. I'll let you know what to do because I can say, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, weeks ago I posted a video all about um, creating a plan to help you with your productivity and y'all this is like a life changing thing for me changes how I come in in the mornings and gets me focused and I'm not flustered or frustrated or not knowing where to start and what to do so go and check that video out so I have my little plan here so that's what it looks like um, and this is a free printable as well. So you guys need to go and get it. Go get the printable. Let me know what you think about the, about the printable. Are you using it? Have you tried it? Holy moly, that thing is loud. I'm not lying, y'all. I'm gonna be really excited when we can get rid of the, the dehumidifier. And I'm just gonna kind of read it, talk it through and make sure that I have everything checked off. So this morning I have behavior cards, which I still, I haven't printed. I just need to get them out of my folder. My office folder is ready. My morning message is ready. My Schoology lessons are done. I need to pull my daily folder, which I actually have it already in my cart. Let me show you. There's my cart. So this is where I just put my daily folder from my large file cabinet. That sucker is full. I apparently have a lot to do today. <laughs> um, so pull my folder, which is done. I'm gonna check through my emails, make sure I haven't answered anything that needs to be, or I have answered anything that needs to be answered. And then I put my music on and get my morning message set up on my TV. And I'm good to go and I'm done. I'm gonna go through and show you guys my planner. Um, and let's get to this week. Okay, so here is this week. I have certain things that I'm going to have to have done. Now I think, I wonder, nope, it's not gonna let me do it that way. So, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna type some of these things in. So today one of the big things is, is I have a, um, a team leader meeting and I'm just gonna put MTG, and I have that at four o'clock today, so that's today. I also need to film um, some things for Upgraded this evening. So that's gonna be a huge chunk of my afternoon. Um, here, so let me see. Here I have um, ELA curriculum, writing um and i'm gonna be out all day so that's gonna be something that i have to get done because i need to get my sub plans done for that day i also have on wednesday um we are going to be doing a faculty meeting and i need to present about uh, e-portfolios which is a new initiative that my district is having us do and so I'm a part of that committee and I need to present on that um, I like to keep file folders to be able to hold all of my students data it just seems to be the easiest thing for me I can't keep 70 something binders inside of my classroom like I did in kindergarten although I do really 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 wish I could but I just can't it's just too much so what I ended up doing instead is I have a math standard sheet for fifth grade and this is what it looks like it has each of the units and it has each of the learning targets for that unit so students have to show mastery on these different learning targets now as they're going through the curriculum uh, we can mark them off and say yep you actually mastered you know I can rounding to the thousandth place so I can hit mastery and I can even write a date um, maybe they're not mastered maybe they're just competent which is still I'm able to kind of move them along because you're not gonna be a master at everything 
let's just be honest like I can't be a master at everything I'm competent on quite a few things I'm mastery on some things but I can't master everything so I would just mark whether the student is competent or mastery and then there are some times where kids are just developing and that just means that you know what you still need to work on it but I feel like we need to take a break from it or else we're both gonna lose our minds and we're just gonna move on and come back to it so it's a really nice just like one spot it's like two pages long for the fifth grade math curriculum and I have one for ELA too where we would just put this inside of their binder so, or their folder so here's kind of what I was thinking and I can't seem to find this stinking <laughs> it's like a hole punch but it's like a two hole punch guys like it just does the little two where you could put the little brads in and I can't seem to find the stinking hole punch I think I have one at home which I can bring um, but I would just punch the two holes and put them in with brads up here and then have another spot So here's where the curriculum would be and then here's where all their work would be So this side would be super duper chunky because it's gonna have a lot of their work inside of it Now mainly just assessments and that type of thing But it's still gonna be here and then here's where we would be easily be able to say oh Here's kind of what we're working on. I'm also thinking about putting our goal sheets right behind this to make it easy to access it that's kind of my thoughts. So hopefully I'll have this done. I am going to have this done. Ain't no hopefully about it. Um, I will have this done this week so that I can show you guys the final product of how I kind of keep track of my students' data because this is just about the easiest way. I want my kids to have access to this so my kids are able to grab their file folders. I just have a spot where they can go grab their file folder and um, be able to see what it is that they're working on. See, and at the end of the day, this is just like, I felt like a sign saying about how awful of a Monday I was going to have. My O fell down. <laughs> Thank goodness there were no children on the stage. Uh, but yeah, my O fell down. <laughs> and now I still have to put it back up, but that's not going to happen right now. I'm too stressed and I really just want to go home and get all this stuff filmed for Upgrade Ed. So that's what I'm just going to do. Okay. On another note, can we just talk about how I have a job for my kids to clean my sink out, they have to wash dishes, but then they also set up my Keurig for the next day? How much are you loving that situation? Because you could just pop it down and get have your coffee like first thing in the morning. Now that makes me feel fantastic. You don't have to do that with these books. You can truly use it as a resource and just kind of easily look up the, what is it that you need to be able to find? It's great. All right, I don't think that last sentence made any sense. I'm running on very little coffee here, people. Um, another book that I am using, and I only have um, one of them. I don't have the second one for some reason. I can't find it. But this is the Common Core Lesson book, and I have it for K to five. Um, one of the other girls that's coming in to do like the ELA with us, she is gonna have the sixth through eighth, just so that we can kind of reference the sixth grade materials. I know I have it somewhere, I just can't find it for the love of me. I love this book because it gives really, really great graphic organizers. It gives you your reading strategies, or your anchors, and then it starts to go, oh, I love this part too, guys. Look, come on, there he goes. Um, check out this part here where it gives you books. Look at all the books. It gives you lots of different options for what to teach and the elements for each of the grades. So you can kind of see a really beautiful progression for that. I'm sorry, I'm super close up. Um, but then it also gives you different graphic organizers. So you have lots of different options of what type of graphic organizer what it needs to look like now I kind of take it a little step further with my graphic organizers because I am using the bridging literacy model um, which is a model that I have created over the past year I've worked on creating this model to help um, do it all in one lesson so teaching reading and writing in one mini lesson a day and helping students be able to see the connections between reading and writing because there is a definite connection they wrote it together it's meant to be together it just needs to stop being separated so I love 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 this book and so I'm gonna take this one with me and then I'm also going to take and this was a new one that um, one of my partners introduced to me so I 
haven't read it all. I use it here and there, which is the big book of details. And this is fantastic for writing. Um, gives you lots of really great mini lessons. And I think what's nice about this one that I like to use in relation to uh, this one, like she worked with this one <laughs> apparently to make this book. <laughs> it's anyways. Um, but what I like to use about this one instead of this one sometimes is I think this one's a lot higher level. So if you're an upper elementary teacher and you're looking for something to really kind of with some of those mini lessons, I think this has a lot of lower elementary, but this goes above and beyond that, which is really, really nice. So I love the mini lessons that are inside of it and it really gets my kids thinking. So those are the four books that I just wanted to say I'm taking with me. Um, other than that, got my laptop, got my iPad. I think I'm good to go, guys. Uh, I did get the O fixed on my choice wall, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, I also had to create a seating chart because there is a lot of things that have been happening in my class as far as just drama. And I felt like it was just a time that I needed to separate a bunch of kids that are in my homeroom. So I created a seating chart this morning and every single class that I meet with, and this means that some kids are gonna hear this message multiple times, are kind of get into the talk. And we're just going back over rules and some of the expectations and just being nice to one another. But it's a little drama here and there, nothing big, but still need to take care of it so that we can make this a safe place for our kids to learn and a place where they wanna come to school every Every day. Oh, that scared me. I thought I heard something. I am now going to get ready to go and pick up my kids from lunch. I met with my two partner teachers. We had to schedule two dates. So I have a date in October, towards the very end of October, where I, um, I we are as a team going to host an instructional night. So we're going to go over our learner management system, how we do grades, how we put up assignments, um, so that parents can easily understand like how to navigate through it. So we're gonna host one of those nights uh, later in October and we're also gonna have like a little fun craft or something to that extent. And we always do food, food, craft, learn something. I mean, it's like the best night ever. Um, and then we also had to figure out our conference days. So we've got th those all mapped out. I have my lunch, I'm feeling better. <laughs> got some food in my belly. And now it's just time to go get kids. And we're working on a writing assessment today. So um, they're doing a pre-assessment, which is really nice. So it's gonna be a little bit quiet, which will be a nice way for me to get some grading done that I need to get done um, while I circulate and, and just walk around the room. I have a couple of things that I do wanna show you. Um, the first was that I wanted to talk to you about the math folders that I had talked to you earlier about in the week. So I told you that I keep like data folders instead of binders because I just have way too many kiddos in order for me to keep some sort of a binder. So they have like a math folder and then they have an ELA uh, folder as well. And then I wanted to somehow have an attachment so that the papers were not falling all over the place and they were there kept a little bit more organized. So what I did is I took um, one of these because I couldn't end up finding like a two hole punch and I ended, ended up moving um, the one end there. Do you guys see that? So that's like my settings in case you want to know what settings I use. Like I hope you can see the number themselves. Anywho, so I ended up moving these. I had to like do some work around because it didn't quite end up working the way that I really needed it to work. So that's what they look like. And then when I went to go and hole punch this just normal, like going through it, my papers were like going past the center line. It was just no bueno. Um, it's almost like I still needed a little bit of room, but then I couldn't move it. It was just a pain just to make sure that they were all pretty consistent and I didn't have to go through and change it all. So here's what I did. Let me move you. Excuse the mess, everyone. Um, okay, so let me show you what I did. These are actually all papers to go home. Where are my math papers? They're still in my holder. 
Okay, so let me take a couple of these that are pretty normal. So here are the math standards sheets that I want to keep on one side so that we can keep track of which standards they are showing mastery, competency, um, so on and so forth in. So I just stuck it through. It's like only the two, so it's not even hitting the other. I hole punched it. It came out with two holes. And instead of doing that to the folder, instead of just putting it in through the folder, it would like move this hole over here, which was a pain in the butt. So I couldn't do, I couldn't just put it that in and hole punch it. So what I had to do is my little work around here. It's a little bit of a work in the beginning, but it, it, it goes pretty quick. So what I ended up doing is I kind of moved it to where it had a little bit of space. It wasn't overlapping in the center. And then I just placed my already hole punched paper there. I took a single hole punch and then I just punched it. Like that, like that. And then I took my little brass brads and then I put those through to keep them in place. So now when the kiddos open it, they have what they're working towards. Their progression is here. So there's their progression. They can see where they're going. They see what they need to be able to show mastery in for fifth grade standards. And then all of their assessments are going to be punched just like this on this side. So this is the evidence. This is the progression here. And so that's kind of my workaround. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, it's gonna work, that's all that matters. <laughs> so I need to do these, and I started talking to you guys about how I needed some sort of like goal sheet. I think I'm gonna end up putting goal sheets just behind this because I feel like this is gonna get chunky with all of the assessments. So it's best just to put their goal sheets back here so that we have kind of the progressions and what they wanna be working towards and achieving. And then I started thinking, oh my gosh, what if I did something like this? Hold on. So I'm playing with something and reading. By the way, having a wheelie chair, oh, it's fantastic. Why didn't I have one of those before? This is great. Um, I started playing with this idea of in reading how I don't want kids to see that the skills that we're learning here in our small groups stays in small groups, right? It's not like Las Vegas. Like it's not what happens in small groups stays in small group. Like I want them to see how they take what we're talking about in small group and then apply it into their independent reading books. So to do that, as we start to learn skills and as they're showing competency in those skills, I then want them to start applying that into their own reading books. So I'm going to make a folder and of course in true Spackman style, I'm going to create a folder that has, um, it's like their house colors. I don't know why I couldn't think all of a sudden. So in true Spackman style, I have all of the house colors, blue, red, purple, and green folder so that the kids, when they come in, they're gonna just grab their folder. I'll have it labeled as well with their name on it. And so on the inside of this, there are page protectors. So I just put in, I think about five or six protectors for right now. Um, I may add more, I may not need all of them. I haven't quite decided that just yet. So I've done something like this in the past, but to have a complete folder that's dedicated to it, I have yet to have. So as they start to finish skills, they'll receive a paper that's almost like, it'll say the skill that they've completed. So for instance, this is a sixth grade folder, so it's settings impact. So it's, I can discuss the impact the setting has on the plot and characters of my story. So as they're reading in their independent reading books, they're going to complete a sticky note and they're just going to place their sticky note in that box. So they have six spots to be able to have those discussions and kind of hold their thinking. And then if they complete 
once we're in the next lesson and we're working in this next lesson, they're going to go into intrinsic characteristics because we've already broken these down into those smaller lessons because the progression doesn't change, right? What changes is how you teach the information, how you accommodate the information, um, if you continue practicing some of those skills, but the progression itself doesn't change. So we have settings impact, then we go into intrinsic characteristics. So that's a lesson two is what we call that in our Schoology, like our learner management system. And it's, I can determine the intrinsic characteristics um, of characters in my text. So this is a review for them. So it, they've gone through it pretty quick, but it's still something that I want them to keep track of because when we go and start talking about character change and getting really in depth and start analyzing character change itself, they're going to need this skill. So. As they go through, as we're working in it, they're gonna continuously add these to it and they're gonna have sticky notes that they use. And when I'm conferring with them, we're gonna pull this out and have those conversations as they are reading. I hope this makes sense. So what I started thinking is, oh, I really like how I have the spots for sticky notes. Sorry, somebody walked in my room. Um, but what I thought was really cool is that we had a spot here for sticky notes. What if, because I create goals for my kids, and I don't want them to have to pull these out because the goal is meant for the week. I don't want them to do daily goals. I feel like that's too overwhelming. It takes way too much up of my time. Monthly goals are just too long. I thought a week was perfect. So what if I create some sort of squares for the back so that when kids are creating their goals, they write the goal on the sticky note and they can keep the sticky note with them and then we can just glue the sticky note into the square as we're starting to show competency. Now, I feel like a long time ago, I, I felt like this would have worked. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying at the moment. I think I'm gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see. So now it's just a matter of getting all these folders done, which I don't necessarily think I'm gonna do today because I need to go to the grocery store. I have no food in my house, y'all. I have no, I don't even understand how I've been feeding my family the past couple of weeks. So I'm gonna get my things packed up and I'm just gonna go to the grocery store, get food, and then go home and finally cook my kids a decent meal. That's what I'm gonna do. So I will catch you all in the morning. Y'all, this morning is a mighty fine morning because I got to wear my jeans. Super stoked. I love being able to wear jeans because I feel like it's the one thing that I just don't have to really think about in the morning. You throw a school t-shirt on, you put a little cardigan or a sweater, and you're off and you're good to go for the entire day. So I'm feeling fantastic this morning. Uh, I did wanna share something with you guys this morning as I am trying to get ready and prepared for the day because I left rather quickly. I do a, a, a live chat on Wednesdays, every Wednesday on at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I go live and I do different things. So last night I did just a basic Q&A live and then I do uh, some that are more presentation style. So the, when you're watching this on the day that it releases, the next Wednesday I'm gonna do one all about really trying to meet the needs of all of the learners that we have in our class. So they're all on different levels. Everybody has it everywhere you go. So how do we meet the needs of all of our kids? So I have a little presentation that I'm gonna do and then I'll do and jump into like a Q&A. So that's gonna be this coming Wednesday when this goes live. <laughs> You'll see it, it's 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So I had the live chat yesterday and I wanted to make sure that I was prepped and ready to go for that. Plus I needed to go to the grocery store and we did. We had uh, baked beans, we had chicken, we had grilled lettuce, it was fantastic very very delicious which was very nice um, and I restocked my fridge which is good to go Blaine ate an entire carton like a little bitty carton of raspberries <laughs> that child he will eat some fruit like it's no one's business all right let's jump in let me show you what it is that I wanted to share with you today when I go to plan out my small groups for my reading and writing instruction, so I use a bridging literacy model, which is a model that I started to create last year to help combine reading and writing instruction into one small group. 
I it is done wonders for my class it frees me up more than you could possibly believe to really do the things that are important that's sitting down listening to my kids read and being able to confer with them individually versus always having to be stuck in a small group all day long which that isn't realistic either like that's not really good reading and teaching you want to be able to kind of move around and really confer with your learners that's where the individualized uh, instruction really takes place if you think about it so something that i um talk about like very very often is the use of graphic organizers now one of the things with graphic organizers is that you need to use graphic organizers that can be related to both reading and writing instruction and what I mean by that is, is that you have one graphic organizer that you use to teach in reading and the same one that you use to then reflect and teach in writing. Why? Because once kids learn how to use a graphic organizer, you don't want to give them something different just because it's pretty or it just does something, it looks at a different skill because the kids are then spending more time figuring out how to use the graphic organizer than they are about the information and the skill that they're trying to put into practice so i am huge about modeling how to use a skill using the graphic organizer so that my kids feel prepared when they go out into group and they know what they're expected to do so what I do is I take a graphic organizer and I print it poster size um, and you can do this using Adobe. You have to open your PDF up as an Adobe and you'll see here like I have four pages and these four pages will get taped together in order to make an entire like a larger poster size that you can use to model it with. So let me show you how to print this out on my laptop okay so I have my graphic organizer opened up as a PDF using Adobe so if you'll see up here I have Adobe um, Acrobat reader and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to file and then I'm just gonna go to print once I have my print screen up as you can see the little spinning wheel of death usually you have it posted on your size right it's usually like fit to size and then you can just hit print so in order to print it on your four pages you're gonna go to poster I always print it at 200 and then don't hit enter <laughs> I learned that the hard way because you want to preview it um, if you come over here and hit your arrow it'll show you how it prints out on four pages here and then you want to make sure that you have, I usually do an overlap of 0 0.005 inches. And that's a really nice overlap so that um, I can make sure that everything's lined up the way that I want to. And then I just set it to um, how many copies I want, the printer that I'm going to, but that's the biggest thing. You want poster, 200%, and then you can just then hit print. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it together. Um, sorry, I have my head cut off, but that's fine. Um, first thing I do is I typically will just try to match up all of my pages to make it look like my graphic organizer. So I put the pages where I need it. Um, so this is one for intrinsic characteristics so that I can model how we go about finding um, out the extrinsic characteristics. And then what I start to do is I find one page and then I'm gonna overlap it. So I need a cut off. If you see here, like I have this little cut off here, I need to cut this excess off so that I can just tape it. And that's what I do, y'all. I do not glue this together. I literally tape it together. So I'm just gonna go right on as close. It's not even perfect. I don't stress about it being absolutely perfect. Once I have it lined up, then I can go ahead and just a little bit of tape. And then there is my graphic organizer. I need to add a little bit more tape. I started running out of tape, so I need to go get a little bit more tape so that I can make sure it all stays together. 
And there you have it guys, that is my poster. That is what I'm gonna use for my small group time. Yes, I will absolutely make other anchor charts. So if I wanna talk about like what is what are intrinsic characteristics, um, I will typically just use like a legal size, I will print something out and that's what I use to talk about what are intrinsic characteristics before I go to model the graphic organizer and how to like apply that skill. So we have those smaller anchor charts. Oh, there's like a hair in my face. Um, we have those smaller anchor charts that I will use, but that's how I model the skill itself and how to dig into the text and really analyze whatever it is that we're focusing on. So. I hope that was useful, I hope that was helpful, I hope you do it because I think it's the most amazing thing ever. It has truly helped me because then I don't get the question of, Mrs. Backman, how do, why do I put in this one little bubble or what do I put in this spot? Now they know what to do because I can say, I want you to think back to small group and I want you to go and look at my anchor chart and see how I did it and then I want you to think. And they all know, like they know what to do because I just used that exact same graphic organizer. There's less time that I spend trying to sit there during small group explaining what this graphic organizer is and how they're gonna use it. They, I never explained anything. I just used it, I showed it to them and through like an interactive model, they pretty much saw what I was doing and what I was putting where. So there's no question there which is really nice it makes it super easy all right good morning everyone so I have literally said good morning to you guys like three or four different times so my camera <laughs> my camera keeps telling me that I have a memory card error it's no bueno um, and every time that I start recording I get it to start working it will just like stop like it just quits and then it erases all of the footage that I ended up just recording so um <laughs> that I don't know what that means is that a sign is that a sign that this Friday is gonna be a little bumpy no absolutely not because I'm not gonna make it that way anyways I wanted to share a couple of things to you today is a half day and it's a very busy half day so normally what ends up happening for us y'all is that we do not um, necessarily have a lunch like by ourselves so we eat lunch with our Mac team just because it works with our schedule a lot easier we have a really fun haunted digital breakout that we're gonna do with our fifth and sixth graders because our sweet little fourth graders are gonna go to listen to a fourth grade like a fourth grade swimming meeting that they have to do so we figured we would just do something fun with fifth and sixth grade which i'm very excited about because i love all things haunted which is going to lead me into this next thing so i was in the grocery store y'all i saw this <laughs> it's life um the world's most haunted places and i thought that this was such a cool way to be able to bring in and encourage reading more. Like I think that it's important for us to be able to show kids that reading doesn't just necessarily happen like in chapter books or picture books, like you can read in magazines. So I think I'm gonna really start focusing and working towards creating a little spot in my room that has magazines that I think are really cool to help encourage some of that reading. And I thought that this was a really great start because it's October and it's like my favorite. <laughs> So something that I'm really excited about, usually my kids get really, really excited about. So I'm really excited to share that for them. How many times am I gonna say that word, y'all? I have been, su been super giddy. Like despite the fact that my camera's not really functioning at the moment, I have been all giggles this morning. If you were on my live chat on Wednesday, then you would have known that I purchased a book, a new picture book, and it focuses a lot on multiple plot lines. So if you are a sixth grade reading teacher, then you know that you have a standard in there that talks about teaching multiple plot lines within a text. Now, when I do my small groups, I never do it with chapter books. I never sit down and read a chapter book with my students because I don't think it's engaging for them. Now I read, I have read aloud where I do a chapter book and we have a discussion and we're like really in depth with it, but that's what the entire higher Mac team. Uh, but I don't necessarily do that for just a small group. So I needed to find a picture book that allowed me to teach the fact that there were multiple plots happening in a text. And y'all, this one is fantastic. Um, it's really, really sad, but it's super sweet. So it's of this young boy 
and he talks about i'm going to show you like just some of the some of the images just because this is like a really odd angle for me to try to be in um but it's of this really sweet boy he ends up he's working in the field so he's uh working with crops and he talks about wanting to dream he's always dreaming of trains and he talks about this boy named casey which i'm inferring from the text that that's his brother and he will talk about what he's doing and he's having conversations with his dad but then there's a moment where he's dreaming something like he's going back and he's remembering something that happened in the past where casey which we think is his brother took him on a train and was like right letting him ride he let him blow the whistle and you know he loved 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 it well as they're like going back and forth between two different events that are like happening like the current and then the past um we find out that casey was riding one night and he ended up getting into a train wreckage and ended up passing away so now the little boy really always remembers train and i think he's also remembering his brother in this situation so it's I, I seriously, that's a back. <laughs> I love this book. I think it's fantastic. Um, I Dream of Trains is what it's called. And it's by Angela Johnson. It's a really, really sweet book. And I think that if you want to teach multiple plot lines, this one will nail it on the head. So um, just wanted to share those two things with you guys. I have a meeting this morning. So I'm not going to be um, taking my vlog any further than right now because... I don't have a lunch, so I don't have a break. And then we have to leave, like, as the kids are walking out of the building, teachers are, are expected to be walking out of the building to go to the high school for some trauma training that we have this afternoon. So that means that I'm like, boom, 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 boom. I don't really have any time at all. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please, please, please remember to give this video a thumbs up for me. Um, also subscribe and hit that little bell for notifications every time I post a video. Uh, don't forget that I do a live feeds live videos on Wednesday night 7 30 p.m eastern I would love for you guys to come and join me we're going to be talking about that differentiation topic and how do we meet kids at all of our different levels and this applies to every grade level so if you're out there and you have kids on different levels come to that live chat I think you're going to really enjoy it so uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate y'all you guys are the best i hope y'all are doing well have a three-day weekend so i'm very very encouraged about that and very excited about it so thank you all so much for watching i'm gonna end this video here and um i'll see you guys next time bye